everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're gonna be continuing with part 12 of our how to build a 5.3 liter LM7 LS engine. So today's video, we're gonna be covering how to put on your steam lines, front accessories, and flex plate. We're also gonna put some uh, wheeled engine feet on it so we can take it over the dyno. This is actually our final video of assembly. After this, there will be no more bolting anything onto the engine, it is basically done. We have taken this engine from a junkyard, 200,000, over 200,000 mile, grubby, awful engine that actually got hydrolocked and had a bent connecting rod, so that was never gonna run again, all the way to a very much hot rod ready LS swap, and I'm really excited to see much power it's going to be making, which we will show in another video. Before we go any further, I wanna say that we are sponsored by Summit Racing, Go show Summit Racing some love, guys. They have sponsored this whole video, and this series would not have happened without the absolutely tremendous, super amazing support that Summit Racing has been sending us throughout this entire build. Make sure you go give them some love. They're an absolutely amazing company to work with uh, and my preferred parts house. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. So now we can move on to our four corner steam kit. Here is our Summit Racing provided part number and there's a link down below in the description. These steam kits are absolutely essential for these LS engines because the thermostat is located lower than the heads. You need a way for air to get out of there because if you don't, you'll create hot spots, overheat, heating, there could be pre-detonation issues. It's just all around bad. So if your engine is mounted, uh, you know, in a classic car where it's angled up a little bit, you can get away with a two corner kit and then block off the uh, two in the rear. But if you have a level engine set up where it's, you know, parallel with the ground exactly, you need a four corner kit. I recommend just getting the four corner kit kind of no matter what, you cover all your bases. And this kit from Summit's gonna do that excellently. So this is using AN, we're gonna have to cut these lines, we're gonna show you exactly how to do that, and then install uh, the hose into those AN fittings. So now we're gonna put uh, our first steam blocks on, we're gonna be working here and here on the back of the engine. All right, we're gonna first take our block that doesn't have an additional barb on the top of it, and you can do it either way, but you just have to make sure that the coolant will cross over together before it goes to the front of the engine. And I've also lubricated our O-ring there with some engine oil, and kind of place that in its home. We're gonna grab our five millimeter T handle. We're just gonna snug this on down, give a little wiggle to make sure it's properly seated in its home. And then you can tighten that down. Don't go too crazy. I think this torque spec's 106 inch pounds. So uh, snug with the T handle is probably fine. Now we're on the driver's side. We can do the exact same thing, except it has this additional barb. And I have also lubricated the O-ring just like before. Go ahead and snug that up. When you're, when you're sending the bolt down, you know, kind of walk it into where its home is going to be. Cause it's a little, uh, it's a little difficult to kind of tell because that O-ring kind of keeps it out of its home. So just give a little bit of a wiggle until you can feel it seat down into its uh, steam hole there, just like that. And snug that on down, and that's perfect. So now what we can do is take this AN fitting that came with our kit, and we're just going to install that by hand right now because we need to get a measurement. Just like that's perfect, and we can do both sides. And then we can remove this piece of the fitting for both. And there we go, now we're ready for a measurement. So now we can take our measuring tape and measure from this flange surface to this flange surface. Like that. And I'm going to put a little bit of bend in mine, so I get a little bit of slack in there, and it looks like we're right at six and five eighths inches. So that's how long we need to make the line. So I have my AN line already in my vise and wrapped very tightly with some uh, 3M scotch tape. I went around uh, three or four times, just make sure it's very, very tight. And I have it in my vise affixed here, and it's under some medium pressure. Now what I want to do is grab a hacksaw, or if you have uh, some sort of electronic implement that makes a nice clean cut, that'll work too. But the main thing you want to do is keep it against the side of the vise like this, so that way you get a nice square cut. And then, while you're cutting, support it with your other hand. And this is a good idea to wear some nice thick gloves because the braid's gonna stab you pretty good. And it's a good idea to wear some nice thick gloves because the braid will poke you pretty good. There we 
go and clean that up with some snippers. Clean up some of that braid, there we go. Then we can remove it. So I have a nice pair of uh, Nipix cutters here, link down below in the description. And we're just gonna clean up the sides of it like this to make sure we get as little fray as possible. Now I've already measured it out and retaped it and put a black dot where I need to cut it. My measurement happens to be six and five eighths inches and we just second verse, same as the first. Just like that. And we need to clean up the fray just like we did on the first cut using our dynamite cutters. Oh, that is really nice. You just want to make sure that this has a, the least amount of fraying possible because if you have too much fray, it won't seal and that's kind of the opposite of what you want. So after a cut, this is what our uh, line should look like. See how it's nice and flush. There isn't a lot of braid sticking out. It isn't frayed very much and the tape being tightly wound is a big contributor in that and going slow with the hacksaw and letting the blade do the work is really the key here and then cut off any excess frays you might have. And now we can remove our masking tape here and uh, get ready to put it in our fitting. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, kind of walk the tube into the fitting and this is gonna be a little tedious. It really helps to get a nice flathead screwdriver in there and just kind of cram the braid into the fitting and just going around and around in a circle until it seats properly. You might even find that it's easy to easier to kind of twist as you go on, but uh, using the flathead screwdriver I've found is a, a very easy way to get the braids to where they need to go because the fitting's not gonna work if any braids are sticking out. So the braids are really working against you here, but once it's seated, you have a nice sealed connection that will never leak. So any uh, frays sticking out, we can grab a pair of flush cuts and just trim those off, make our life a little easier. There we go. And grab our flathead screwdriver and we're gonna get back to our work here putting it into the fitting and all the fittings are this way uh, for putting a n together so there's no secret and they're not different they're all the same and we're just gonna keep rotating pushing in and twisting making sure that our fitting doesn't slip there we go keep twisting keep twisting and forcing down into it There we go, now it's really coming along. Now you can look down into the fitting and you can see that the tube is completely against this surface here on the inside. So you know you're correctly installed. So here is our line, the six and five eighths, I think how long this is, but uh, we got this fully assembled. The exact same uh, procedure applied to this side as this side. So what we wanna do now is put it basically upside down in our vise here with a nice uh, terry towel. and snug it up, not crazy hulk tight or anything. And then we're gonna install our fitting. So what I'm doing now is grabbing some assembly lube and putting it on our threads here for our fitting. You don't have to use a ton, but it is important to use some. And then we can install that on our other fitting, on our line, and just wind that in by hand for right now. So what I'm doing right now is I'm winding this in by hand, it's actually gotten very firm, is that it is swedging that material outside and inside. So it makes this really, really awesome and uh, leak free. So now I'm gonna grab a 16 millimeter wrench here and I'm just gonna continue tightening. Then we're just gonna snug that up. There we go, don't go crazy tight. And that is ready for installation. Just do that for both sides. Alrighty, so what I've done is lubricated the O-ring here on the end of our AN fitting, and we're just gonna feed that into our steam line adapter. There we go, looking good. We're gonna grab our 16 millimeter wrench, and we're just gonna snug that up. Don't go crazy with it. That's plenty. Now we can attach the other side. All right, we're over on the passenger side and what we're gonna do is maneuver our steam line into its home there. Might fight you a little bit because you still have uh, you know, plenty of slack. And what we can do once it's lined up is get this started because this coupler moves independently of this side of the fitting. Look at that, it's already gotten started, looks great. So as we're turning it, you can see that one of these surfaces turns on the other. So you can tighten that up. 
without undoing the line. We can do this because it has an o-ring seal inside of the fitting that allows these two surfaces to rotate, which is really cool. So it makes AN so nice. And then, just like the other side, we're just gonna tighten it and just snug. Don't, you know, don't go nuts. It's got an o-ring. And that is plenty, and our rear steam line is installed. So this is what our finished rear steam line product should look like. It looks absolutely excellent, which is awesome. So the good news is all the A-lines are exactly the same. You build them exactly the same way. Measure, cut, install your fittings, and you're basically done. So what we have here is a right angle, and this right angle is gonna go underneath our intake manifold towards the front of the engine and attach to another right angle on the driver's side on the front of the engine. So here's what the rear of our steam line assembly looks like. We go from here, cross over to this side, up on this right angle, and then it goes underneath our intake manifold to the front of the engine. Comes from here, from the back of the engine to the front, into this right angle, which also goes into the head, and then it goes off to here. It tees out, we'll go over that later. This line goes over to the passenger side of the head, and we'll go back to that T. It tees off right here into another AN fitting, right angle, uh, a right angle fitting into a, an AN fitting. And then that goes over to here into this uh, block provided by ICT, which is why I was super excited earlier because it already has uh, one of these fittings that comes with it that connects to our dash four fitting and it goes right into water. Already pre-tapped and ready to go. Just use some plumber's tape. And now we can put on our alternator bracket and then our water pump. Now, if you don't have this block provided by ICT, which I really think you should get because it's awesome and it prevents you from modifying things, which I always like, uh, you're gonna have to tap this fitting into the back of the water pump or uh, a fitting onto the radiator. All right, so what we're gonna focus on next is putting our water pump on, which is here. This unit was sent over by Summit Racing because we are sponsored by them. And it's an AC Delco part. I have the link to this exact water pump down in the below in the description. Now, with this engine, there's a couple different water pumps you can get. This is like the car version of the water pump. You can tell because it has kind of this um, interesting looking pulley on it. The other ones are a little bit thinner uh, and stick out just a teeny bit more. The truck one is actually a little bit taller, about three quarters of an inch. So I thought that would kind of uh, mess with our balancer, which is a truck balancer. But our good friends over at ICT had thought of that with their truck alternator bracket kit. Check this out. They give you three quarters of an inch offset uh, mounts for your water pump and they even included a steam line port. Check that out. It's all threaded and ready for our application so we don't have to drill into our water pump like you normally have to do if you didn't go with ICT and of course this was sent over by Summit Racing and the link is down below in the description and it has the mounting for our alternator uh, brackets as well and we'll get into that later but I need to open it up so I can put on our water pump because you need these to work with our uh, you know truck style damper and then also we have our thermostat and housing also sent over by Summit Racing link down below in the description and it looks just like a stock replacement unit, which is perfectly good uh, for our application here. So all these really cool mounts that ICT made out of built aluminum right here in the United States. Um, you're gonna wanna put the gasket that is included. They gave you four gaskets because you need to double side this. And you're gonna want a little bit of adhesive um, to hold that in place. We're not going to do that because this thing is gonna be sent off to the dyno and the water pump's gonna come off anyway. So go ahead and put some adhesive on here and make sure you don't get any kind of gasket slippage if you're just gonna put it in a vehicle, but we are gonna be heading to the dyno after this. And then as far as bolts go, here is your stock application. These are made by ARP. There's our part number, link down below in the description. They are fantastic bolts sent over by Summit Racing. But ICT knew if you were in the situation we're in, because they must have assembled these one of these at some point, which is always refreshing from a manufacturer in the aftermarket, they sent over about three quarters of an inch longer bolts to account for this block of aluminum. So the next thing we can worry about is our final accessory. We're not really doing a stock rebuild where you'd have a power steering pump and uh, an AC bracket or an AC compressor to worry about. 
Uh, this is going in a hot rod, really not going to worry about those two things, but if you do, you're going to have to change uh, your mounting solution. But for our hot rodded application, this is going to work perfectly. And we got this kit from ICT Billet, Summit Racing sent it on over. Again, the link is down below in the description for our alternator kit. That's what's in these nice plastic bags. And then our alternator itself is made by Summit Racing, link down below in the description. Take a look at that bad boy. Oh, it looks fantastic. And this is going to supply our hot rod with plenty of power. It looks absolutely excellent. It's brand new actually, which is always nice. So you might notice that this pulley is pretty much the standard size. This is, you know, referred to as the bigger pulley. So the reason I bring that up is because we have these uh, two pulleys here and the bigger one is going to uh, spin slower. So it, you know, it takes more time to go around uh, because we have a smaller than stock uh, damper. And because we have that smaller than stock damper, they included this one, which will spin our alternator faster because our damper is much littler. So uh, if you notice your charging system with this damper, if you have a stock damper, don't worry about this, is not performing uh, adequately enough, maybe take an air impact gun and remove this nut and then replace uh, your pulley with the smaller guy. So I got our instructions out. They look very straightforward and very approachable. The first thing we're gonna grab is this awesome looking plate and these four countersunk Allen headed bolts. So now we can install our ICT alternator bracket using the provided countersunk bolts. Those are a six Allen. We can go ahead and just get them started. I'm gonna leave them loose for right now so I have a little bit of play. Now that they're all wound in by hand, we can go ahead and snug those up with our ratchet and go in a cross pattern so it sits down evenly. And remember, you're tightening into aluminum, so be gentle. There we go. So in the back of this block here, I've already used some contact cement and put the gasket on so it will hold it nice in place for me while I'm maneuvering a water pump on. This might be a little cumbersome. Make sure all your gaskets line up. So once we're sure all our gaskets are in place, we can grab our 10 millimeter socket and just snug those up and try to go in a cross pattern as much as possible. Snug those up, there we go. And now we can grab our torque spec. So our torque spec is going to be uh, one pass at 11 and then another pass at 22. So we can start our first pass at 11, going in as much as a cross pattern as we can. Now we can up it to 22 and repeat that process. And there we go. So on these water pumps, there's two different types of uh, thermostat housing, some that use a traditional gasket and some that just use this O-ring. We have the just the O-ring type, and you wanna make sure that it's just seated nice into its home and that it's on nice and level so you won't have a leak. And then we're gonna use those uh, eight millimeter bolts that came with our bolt kit from ARP earlier. Go ahead and put this on. When you're installing these washers too, make sure that the beveled edge is pointing up towards the fastener. And I don't have a torque spec for you guys here, but uh, this is an aluminum water pump and these are just eight millimeter bolts. Uh, wrist tight is what I would say. And I got my very small ratchet. I'm just gonna tighten it with my wrist and that's it. And there we go, perfectly. So now we're gonna take this bracket assembly for our alternator and we're just gonna leave it on hand tight for right this moment. There we go, leave it nice and loose so we can get the alternator on a little easier. Now we can grab our alternator, put that in. What I'm gonna do is put in one bolt like this. So what we can do is slide the bolt back, put in our spacer like that, slide our bolt back forward and begin to thread it. If you're having trouble putting this in, 
you can go ahead and loosen these bolts here to give you a little more clearance. All right, now we can put in the little more difficult bolt because well, there's not a lot of room to work. So I'm gonna do my best here. What we can do is put our bolts in. Let's put the spacer in. I have the bolt on the front. And we can tighten those up. There we go. So here's our idler kit sent over by ICT Billets, sent over by Summit Racing, because of course we are sponsored by them. And this is going to give us our uh, tautness on our serpentine belt, so our alternator will work. So now we can grab our bracket, preload it with our spacers here, get those bolts started. There we go. Grab our 13 millimeter and tighten those up. There we go. Now we can grab our six Allen here and install that countersunk bolt through this uh, sweeping bracket arrangement. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna tighten this just yet. I'm just gonna leave it so it can actuate freely. I want it to be able to swing like this. So now we can grab our 25 millimeter bolt, install it from the back side into these threads where my thumb is. And this is actually what's gonna control uh, your sweep. So you're gonna be able to set it somewhere and tighten this bolt my left hand is on and then that's gonna be able to set your tension. So now we're gonna grab our step spacer and feed it into the back of our pulley here or the front, doesn't matter, it's exactly the same. Front to back, have our thick washer on our 40 millimeter bolt, feed that through and then put it into the only threads left. Grab our 13 millimeter socket and just snug that up. Don't go crazy tight with it. Spins nice and free, very cool. So now I can worry about our serpentine belt. I have this one Summit Racing sent over. It is a six groove belt that is 63 inches long. And we can just put it on, put it on like this around our tensioner. The smooth side is gonna go onto our water pump like this. And the groove side is gonna go on our alternator like that. And this is where the swing action of this tensioner really comes into play here. So what we can do is grab a half inch drive uh, ratchet or breaker bar, something like that, and uh, articulate this up so you get a little more tension and then tighten that bolt on the back side. So I have an extension on a half inch ratchet here. I'm gonna put that there. And then on the back side, I'm gonna tight, I'm gonna tension this with my right hand, and then I'm gonna tighten that bolt on the back side with my left. And there we go. And then you can do a nice tightness te test. This seems good. And because this isn't a self-adjusting system like modern cars, they actually have a spring right here that keeps tension on it and they're really cool because it keeps up with the belt loosening. You're gonna have to be on top of that. And once the engine's been running for a little while, go ahead and recheck the tension on this belt. And then for our final tightening, we're gonna go ahead and snug up this Allen again. There we go. So now we can worry about our dip tube situation, which we're just gonna go stock. We have our stock unit right here, sent over by Summit. Uh, a little hard to read that part number on there, it's a little faded, but I will leave a link down below in the description to it. And then we have our stock GM dip tube. It's again, sent over by Summit. Go ahead and remove that. Oh, that looks great. And now we can place it in our engine. So what I'm gonna do is put it in a rough place where I want it, right here. This is where I roughly want it to be. And I've also uh, removed these two ignition wires just to give us a little more uh, ease of working. So I want it like this. Perfect, it's gonna go just like that. I have a bit of RTV on the end of my finger here. We're gonna just gonna apply it around this seal. Just like that, you just want a nice little film around, it doesn't have to be a ton. You don't want to get a bunch of this in your pan or anything. There we go. And we can orientate our dip tube into its home. Ooh, just like that, absolutely perfect. I've already removed the header bolt from earlier. We can go ahead and reinstall that. Go ahead and snug this bad boy down, our 10 millimeter. There we go. And then we can replace our dipstick just like you normally would on any car. 
and there we go. So now we can talk lubrication. So what we're gonna do is use some Mobile One Full Synthetic 10W30 to fill our oil filter. We're gonna have this engine dynoed, so they're gonna be using uh, their preferred break-in oil and procedures, and I'll let you know how that goes. But if I was doing this at home in my garage, I'd go with the Mobile One uh, 10W30. It is always a good bet. So the oil filter we're using today is an AC Delco PF46E, link down below in the description, of course. And this is just a stock uh, oil filter replacement unit and uh, they always work great. So I'm just gonna use it here. And I don't normally do this, but since this is a brand new engine and there is basically no oil in it, I'm gonna pre-fill the filter. And don't let it fool you. Sometimes you'll put oil in there and then the paper inside there absorbs it all and the level drops. So you might wanna keep an eye on it, but basically, you just want to make sure that there is oil in it, just like this one. And then, of course, put a little on your finger and go around our seal so there's a nice film on there, just like that. So now, just like a regular oil change, we're going to replace our oil filter, just spinning that on. Now, there are a lot of schools of thought when it comes to how to tighten this. It even says on the filter itself, three quarters beyond snug. What I like to do is basically about as tight as I can get it on with one hand. Always seems to be good. There we go. So this next step is vital if you are going to be putting this engine on a dyno like we're doing. If you're not putting it on a dyno and it's going directly in a vehicle, you can go ahead and skip this step. What we have here are some Summit Racing branded uh, engine feet with wheels on them, which makes it really nice. And you're gonna wanna use this whenever you're gonna be dynoing because you wanna be able to move the engine easily. And I really don't like using just the engine stand because it has a higher center of gravity. And if you have it in the back of a truck and you take a turn, it might fall over and that would be tragic. So these are cool because it is a very low center of gravity and doesn't really have a chance to fall over. And of course, Summit sent these on over. The link is down below in the description. And we're just gonna be using the same uh, motor mount bolts we removed earlier. Now we can install our engine feet here. Go ahead and start the bolt on by hand. And we're going to grab our 16 millimeter socket. We're going to tighten the next pattern. All right, there you go. And the cool thing is the other side is exactly the same. Just make sure that this brace is facing backward. So I've installed our engine cradle. Engine cradle? Sling? Sling. So I've installed our engine sling to right here, right here on the top of the head. And I've just basically gotten these two even because obviously they're at different heights. So you just want to keep those as even as you can. And then on the back, the same treatment, top of the head, top of the head, as even as possible. So when you pick it up, it's nice and level. All right, so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and uh, take the weight off of the engine stand so we can slide the uh, rear apparatus off of there and get the engine stand out of the way. Make sure this set screw is nice and tight on your engine crane. And we'll start pumping until that moment right there when you kind of notice it drifting a little bit. That means all of the weight is on our crane and we can remove our engine stand. There we go. Very cool. Now what we can do, since we have engine feet on our engine, we can lower it safely and slowly to the ground. Now we can guide our engine like this, so the feet don't come in contact with the legs of the crane. And then we're leave the set screw here. Very slowly. Oh, that's the perfect rate. Just like that, very cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this, uh, the engine crane a little bit on there, so the top of this uh, sling doesn't come in contact with our uh, intake manifold. We'll put some towels down first. Very cool. Top of our intake manifold nice and protected. We'll go ahead and put our sling gently on top. And I don't want to take this off just yet because it's going to the dyno. We're going to use the same apparatus to put it on the engine dyno. So now we can take a 17 millimeter socket and remove 
this rear apparatus here for our engine stand. And there we go. And for our last piece of RLS we will be bolting on before we go to the dyno shop is our Summit Racing branded flex plate. I have left a link down below in the description of this awesome part. They sent it on over to us so we can show it to you fine people. The only thing you really got, there's two things you got to know about this. So see this beveled raged, raised edge? See it has a dish here and a beveled raised edge here. This beveled edge needs to face your crankshaft. And then you see how there's an additional hole right here? That, there's three holes that line up in a row just like that on the end of the crankshaft and you just have to line it up there as well. And don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to do that. And to affix this to the back of our crank, Remember way long ago in episode one or two, I said to hold on to these bolts because they're special? Well, here they are. These are actually new ones. You can tell because they have the new uh, blue kind of like Loctite stuff on there. Uh, I lost mine. Actually, I just found them again today, but that doesn't matter. I bought these at a GM dealership. I'll leave a link down below in the description of these two because they're pretty special bolts and you need these exact bolts. It can't be any different. So now we can place our flex plate on, making sure that beveled edge is facing the crankshaft. And here are the three bolts kind of in a row match up with the three holes kind of in a row on our flex plate and we can put that on because the flex plate only goes on one way. Can install our bolts. There we go. And whenever you're installing bolts in a circle like this, I always like to go in a cross pattern, even if like it doesn't seem like it matters because it's just a good practice, good habit to be in. Now I'm going to grab a 15 millimeter socket and I'm just going to go very gently. I'm not going to, you know, let the impact gun do a ton of work. I just want to Put it down a little bit so it's a little easier to tighten later. Perfect, now we can grab our torque specs. All right, with our torque wrench set at 15 foot-pounds, we can make our first pass. We're just gonna go in a star pattern. Here's our first pass. Our second pass is 37 foot-pounds. All right, here's 37. Go again, that star pattern. And make sure you're holding it completely flush to these shallow headed bolts, because it can slip off pretty easy. And then for our final pass, it's 74 foot-pounds. All right, on 74 foot-pounds, our final pass here. Again, go in that star pattern. Very crucial. And there we go, our flex plate's installed. So from junkyard to dyno, I'm really excited to see how much power this thing's gonna make. So let's send it off. So that is how to put on your flex plate, your front accessories and your steam lines. And it's also the end of the assembly portion for this video series. I'm overjoyed with how this has uh, come about. I am more than grateful to Summit Racing for basically making this happen. This video series would not have happened without them. So make sure you go show them some support. We will be dynoing this engine in the next video. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I hope I've earned that subscription from you here today on YouTube. And if you're interested, there's a link down below in the description to the previous 11 videos where we go over exactly how to turn a junkyard LS into what you guys saw here today. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you next time.